Hey YouTube, this is Justin, aka Demonic Sweaters, your guide in DIY multimedia production, and today I'm here today with an explanation, more of an explanation than a tutorial, but I've had uh, some users ask me, and uh, one user in particular on YouTube uh, ask me, you know, why don't I do something about Jack, because uh, it's pretty confusing, and a lot of the audio programs at Linux tend to use Jack, so I thought that was a great idea, and that's what I'm doing. So what I have uh, running in the background here is something called QJack Control, or QJack CTL, actually. But uh, what it does is it's basically a GUI front end to Jack. Jack itself has no graphics. It's just a text-only program. And you don't need a GUI for it, but it's much, much easier to use if you do use QJack Control. What I'm doing here is I wanted to just first give a quick overview of what Jack actually is. Now, is it an audio driver? Not exactly. Um, your audio driver is still also in Linux, and that's the advanced sound or advanced Linux sound architecture or something like that. And that is really still what your sound is is being controlled by. However, Jack is a server a sound server that's running in conjunction with ALSA and what it's doing it's basically basically the router or the patch bay if you will uh, that allows you to interconnect all different types of software uh, together you know that are all jack compatible as well as uh, give you a very low latency uh, audio interface or audio connection to your interface and the way that this works, I don't even totally know, uh, but you know, because I'm not really a, a really big into developing, but I do understand that you do need to have uh, ALSA for it to function or something like ALSA. Because if you go in here, let me close this out and we go to setup. Right here, you have the driver. So right now, you can see that it's using ALSA as the driver, and this is the default driver for uh, Linux. But there are some options here as far as, uh, you know, I have OSS, which was the very old uh, Linux audio driver. And I remember using that way back in the day. Port audio, I think that might be Mac. Uh, I'm not totally sure. I forget. And I don't even know what some of these other ones are. FreeBob, no idea. Um, but so, yeah, that right there shows you that it is still working with ALSA. So it's not actually the driver itself. It's basically something that works alongside the driver that uh, controls the audio. And another way to look at this, like, because here's another thing people get confused about, is, well, then what is pulse audio? Because that's another uh, sound uh, term you hear a lot in Linux. And pulse audio is essentially, it's a similar thing to jack. Pulse audio is also not your driver, but it works with ALSA and manipulates the audio streams in ALSA to make it easier for you know your average desktop user to kind of uh, you know control volumes and and do things like that. Like for example, I have the Pulse Audio mixer right here, and I just opened that. This is just P A V U control is the name of this application, and uh, this is very handy for Pulse Audio. Now you'll see I have this jack sync right here pulse audio jack sync and so i'm actually using both pulse audio and jack at the same time and this used to be a much more complicated thing to do in the past but right now it's very easy to do uh well at least in ubuntu 1604 lts this is like you can get this up and running in minutes and it's very easy all you need to do first off is just get jack installed and the easiest way to do that, I recommend just installing, going to you, you know, your console, and well, this is later, but what you're gonna do first is, uh, let me just delete this out, and then you're gonna do sudo apt install uh, qjack ctl. And then once you do that, it's going to download and install this, but since uh, qjack ctl depends on jack, it's going to automatically download and install that as well. So you don't have to worry about typing in Jack too. Just install QJack Control and it'll automatically install everything that you need for that. Once you get that done, then you're gonna go and type in 
uh, what I just had there, which was the uh, pulse. Wait, what was it? And that is just sudo apt. Oops. Install pulse audio module jack. And once you have that installed and you start up jack, it's going to give you it. Well, if you start up QJack control and then start up jack like that, you should like automatically see this pulse audio jack sync uh, go in there. And then if you want to get just uh, audio output from a regular uh, application, then you just select on your output devices, you select pulse audio jack sync as your default or fallback, and then it will automatically uh, use that as the playback. So whatever device you have selected in pulse audio for your output device, whatever device you have selected as your output will be what plays back in pulse audio. And so then you can use pulse audio and Jack at the same time, which are both using also. <laughs> I know it's like really confusing, but that's just how, how it works. Um, also still the driver, uh, pulse audio and Jack, uh, control audio streams within also because also is very, uh, it's not easy to program and it's not easy to figure out at all. So both of these were kind of made uh, to lessen the headache of ALSA uh, and get that working as easily as possible for developers and for users as well. So what can you do with Jack? Why would you want to use Jack in general? Well, for one, uh, the, well, let me just go back a little bit. One of the reasons why so many programs use Jack in Linux is because it takes a lot of the development away from the developer for the audio side of it, like the audio in and out side of it, because Jack already has a fully developed, you know, audio interface that all you have to do is just call like instances of Jack input and Jack output from your program. And then you can have a fully functioning uh, audio, you know, recording and playback device if you're using Jack. And so you don't have to write any of that. It's already there. You can just use it. Now, why would you want to use Jack as opposed to Pulse Audio is because Jack allows you to get uh, very low latency, where Pulse Audio doesn't really do that. So if we go in here to Setup, and you can see right here my frames and period, the lower you make this number, the better your latency is going to be. And latency is the time that it takes for the audio to make a complete path you know, through the system. And if you have a very low, and what I mean by that, say if you're recording, you know, your voice, like if I'm recording my voice, there's a slight delay from the time that it leaves my mouth and actually gets recorded by the computer. And the lower the latency is, the shorter that delay will be. And so Jack allows you to put, you can put a much lower number in here, and then you'll get a much lower latency right here. And the reason why I have it uh, set this high right now is just because I'm going doing the uh, screen capture software, and I I want to I want to uh, make sure I don't get any glitches or anything like that. And sometimes if I have that set really low while I'm doing screen capture, I can get some audio glitches. So and they call those X runs uh, within the Jack uh, community. So trying to keep away from getting X runs, you can have a higher number here. Uh, the lower the number more of a chance of X runs, but you will get lower latency. If you want to minimize X runs, uh, I know I'm kind of jumping topics all over the place, but I, I just thought of this since we're talking about it. While you're recording, one of the best things you could do is actually just disable your networking. So any Wi-Fi or any networking at all, just go, you know, depending on what uh, desktop environment you're using, but just, you know, right click it and click on uh, disable networking or however you have to do it on yours and that will minimize a lot of X runs right there that'll get rid of like probably 75 percent of them come from wi-fi and things like that so um okay so more advantages of using jack and why you would want to use it is mainly and that's why i have this open right here shit didn't mean to record but i just did um this is a, a little program called Time Machine, and I like this program just because it's very simple. All it is is a tiny little audio recorder, and it's just a big record button. Um, so the reason why 
Jack is cool is you can actually connect a bunch of different programs together. So for example, I have uh, Q-Tractor open uh, somewhere here. Where is it? There it is. So Q-Tractor is open here. And if we go into, go back to where we were just looking at, we can see Q-Tractor right here in our audio outputs in the Q-Jack control. And then I also have Time Machine, which is my audio recorder. So if I wanted to record a mix from Q-Tractor and, you know, whatever else I was running, I can just connect that to Time Machine. And well, it's already connected right now, but let's disconnect it. I can connect it to Time Machine by click highlighting both and click connect. And then whatever I play out of Q-Tractor, if I hit record here, I can record into Time Machine. And say if I had another program, like let's do like, uh, um, okay, let's do Zen. Zen adds sub effects. And this is a great uh, software synthesizer that I'm sure many of you, many of you are aware of. So now we have Zen add sub effects. And if we were doing, you know, from Q Tractor, say we had some MIDI that we were sending to uh, Q, uh, what is it? To Zen add sub effects. And we connected all that through our MIDI. Then we could have Zen add sub effects also going to Time Machine. Connect that there. And so now anything we play uh, from Q Tractor and Zen add sub effects can be recorded in Time Machine. And so it's basically like a really, really cool and amazing patch bay that you can use in your computer. And you can also use this. Say I wanted to record, you know, like a stream legally <laughs> from, you know, a web radio station or something like that, or YouTube. If you have the, the Pulse Audio or the Pulse Audio Jack Sync module installed, like I showed you a few minutes ago, then you could use that. You could connect that down here to Time Machine. Um, and so whatever you connect, or it doesn't even have to be Time Machine. It can be Audacity or any program that can use Jack you can just connect them back and forth and then have all this stuff set up and recording. It can become very complicated sometimes, but it doesn't need to be. You can just use one thing and uh, and that's all. And what's even you know really cool about all of this, once you get all this set up, uh, you just have a lot of uh, possibilities of things that you can record. And Jack uh, gives you the ability to interconnect all these different programs. It gives you lo low latency. It's not a driver. It still uses ALSA, but it controls ALSA to give you to give you more uh, flexibility and power over ALSA, basically. And that's pretty much all. Um, hopefully, you guys understood this and it made sense. Um, <laughs> I know it, it's still a little weird. You know, it's different than like Windows, where you just have like you know, a driver and the driver's doing all of that, you know, like you have like ASIO and then your ASIO driver is what you select. And this is similar. I mean, you're see the, the, what gets confusing about this is a lot of programs that use Jack, they consider Jack a driver, you know, so you have to select Jack from the driver options, even though it's not technically a driver, it's, it's still also, but it's just, it's connecting through Jack to get to also. And that seems, you know, that may seem like it's kind of weird and like, uh, you know, wouldn't that make it actually slower? But somehow it doesn't. Somehow it makes it faster. I'm not exactly sure, like, how, but it does. Um, you can actually use ALSA directly with certain programs and it works really well. Like uh, uh, Mixbus, I know, can do it really well. And our door can use ALSA and get very low latency. So whatever Jack is doing to achieve that low latency, those two programs I know can do it without Jack. But since you can use Jack with them, you might as well. Um, so I don't know. Unless you just want to work like solely in our door and not ever connect anything else to it, then it's fine just to use also. But if you're using just also, you lose the ability to interconnect uh, the different programs together. Okay, so hopefully that all made sense. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe. Uh, click any sponsored links I might have. I might post something down below about Linux if I can, you know, an Amazon affiliate link or something like that. And if uh, you get a chance and you want to shop on Amazon, just go through that link and that'll help me out. 
So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope everybody learned something and have a great day, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.